Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, wrestling. They uh, won another national title. Uh, they're pretty freaking good. Um, I, I think, I think this weekend, in a lot of ways, this past weekend was a microcosm, a celebration of not just this season, but this era of Penn State wrestling and and how special it is. Um, and it's it's fascinating how and and i tried to write this on the blog and i hope it came through but it's fascinating how we've almost just become programmed and and almost borderline taken it for granted that how impressive this is oh of course they won a national title and i i think i think that was what, what stood out to me this weekend the most um this this team is special the coach in particular is is special and it, it it's never, in my opinion, never going to kind of reach the levels that it reaches. We see it with even lacrosse or some of these other kind of second tier Olympic sports, right? But it, I think it deserves to at least be celebrated in, in a lot of ways. Um, what was uh, what stood out to you about this weekend? I think I finally um, jumped into the dynasty conversation. I mean, it's over, like they are, um, but I didn't chafe at it. And we didn't get to it with Jeff, Jeff Byers a few weeks ago. I mean, Iowa won all its championships. Right. And it, and, and it was hard for me when people were starting to call this a dynasty to, to not look and say, okay, but the numbers are still pretty close, right? Like the numbers are still and realistically, you know, what's the difference when you win the national championship by a hundred points, <laughs> you know, when you have the champions and did the, and to have done the things they've done, I think not that I wasn't there before and didn't appreciate it, but I think this was, this I didn't think this was a very impressive performance, right? Um, and I think the thing that Penn State people don't know, if you don't travel for wrestling, and if you're not willing to hear it, is I think during the time period of this dynasty, Penn State's gone from the team that was really pretty good, but not great. You know, so they won a few national championships and people were kind of happy for them, whatever else, to now we're the bad guy. Like, I mean, Penn State's the bad guy in this, right? And And it's funny for Penn State people who can't, admit that because they'll say, well, look how nice the wrestlers are. And Kale's a good guy. That's all well and good, but people don't like success, right? Consin continued success. Um, and while it's a wonderful story and it's an earned story, it's a great story. I think it's interesting also how that story looks different in Cedar Rapids or Minneapolis or, you know, Arizona. Right. Um, so, but yeah, very impressive. Just gosh. And they left points on the board, right? Realistically, right. They left some points on the board, and and if and if the sport were covered a little bit differently, there's a couple, there's a sub story at least in one place where people would say, eh, "What happened here?" Okay, so, hold on. Can I? Can, but I need to write all this down to because there's a lot that we have to unpack there. Um, let's. I, I am writing this down because let's let's get to the sub story because I want to hear your take because this is the only text that I got all weekend. From Mr. Samsel. Let's hear it. What, is, is, this what you, is this the yes. Messenbrink test? What are you what are you grumpy about? I don't think he knew the score at the end of the battle. I don't think he knew what the score was. And the announcers, to their credit, said, Hey, he should be a little more active here. He's got a stall. He should be working to get this. And he lost by a point because of riding time, because he wasn't as active as he probably should have been. And I think if you look at the body language, and this is my conspiracy theory, right? Like if you look at the body language afterward he looked a little bit like what was going on. Like there were a couple of shots of, Hey, I, I didn't know that. Like, so I don't know if that's on him or if it's on the coaches, but I don't, I, I think he wrestled a better match. I just think he wasn't in position to know what the score was at the end, which is interesting. Okay. I, I missed this cause I was watching on my phone. So I didn't, I didn't hear that. I, I didn't really quite pick up on it. Um, yeah, like it, it was when it happened. It, it, and you have a more trained eye than than me, particularly. Well, I think the announcers did a good job with it. Like I think the announcers throughout the weekend. I think Daniel Cormier and and Jordan Burroughs were different from what wrestling fans get all season long on ESPN, the Big Ten Network. They're not as staid. They're not as traditional, but they they're wrestlers. They know what they're talking about. I think they were they were good about some stuff. Um, and that was one they didn't they didn't beat it over the head. But I I'm just they kicked Penn State kicked everybody's tail. And still left a couple points on the board potentially, right? That's I, I don't impressive. Think I, yeah, I don't disagree yeah. there. Um, I didn't, I didn't catch the other thing. I didn't catch, which I kind of saw based off of some tweets going around, was the the Jordan Burroughs comment about uh, uh, Carter's knee. Um, 
did that catch you off guard as somebody that pays attention no, I, to wrestling? No, I heard it and I, I didn't question it, right? I mean, the, the gist was, hey, the dude's got an injured right knee. I'm surprised nobody's going after him there. Like, why aren't you? Yeah. If he trots out on the on the mat with that big thing on his leg and you know he's hurt, I think if people didn't go at it, they were probably silly. And he was prepared for that. And I think the people online for Penn State were like, oh, he's just, that's horrible for him to say. It's not horrible for him to say. That that's just happens to be the truth. It's not the truth you like to hear, but it's the truth, right? So, and, and I think that's where Penn State fans sometimes get that holier than thou. Well, we would never do that. Would you really? Like, would your guy never, ever go for an injured spot on another player? Like, in a sport, is- like, you know. It is funny to hear that and then see the juxtaposition of this is my bracket, which was a direct quote from a Penn State athlete, uh, which uh, to to Carter's credit, he deserves every ounce of of credit. And he could say that because he's right. And he did that after the particularly after the I think it was the the quarterfinal match uh, that kind of was the question mark to to really if he was going to get through to win a national title. So yeah. credit to him, credit to him there. Uh, okay. The dynasty thing was interesting to me that you brought up. You, I want to unpack that. I want to, I want to be your. I, 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 the numbers weren't the Penn state's numbers weren't significant are not significantly. And maybe until this weekend, different than Iowa's runs, right? They're just not like Iowa was the national champ every year forever. It seemed like in the eighties and nineties. Right. And, and that's, it was just hard for me to shake that mentality, maybe because I was grew up with Penn State not being there. Um, but I don't know that I felt that there was a big difference between the two. They were just different dynasties at different times. Now, after this weekend, it, it this is this run is the most impressive in the sport, I think. Okay. Know, in in modern yeah. era, because I don't what think I was, the Oklahoma State old ones count in terms of modern era. What I was gonna say is with the page thinking about the Patriots dynasty of, of my lifetime, that's been the p- predominant sports dynasty in my lifetime. I can't tell you what the score was. I can tell you how many championships they have, but I, I can't tell you what the mm-hmm. scores were. And I think that's the way I, I would look at that, or at least challenge you on that, Steve. Um, look at us getting feisty today. No, um, I think they were right there. I just, I just, I guess when you're here in, in happy Valley, when, when the discussion is the discussion leading up to, it was all about, the dynasty and are they going to set the record and everybody's worried about that it it it, it doesn't diminish the winning but it gets back to your first point where they're used to winning that's the expectation right? right so the discussion becomes the record and are they going to be dominant and i think that's a fine discussion but at the same time then it's okay you have to understand that it's okay for other people to be ticked at you for being so good or frustrated at you and the answer is get better and i agree but and they may not be able to i mean that may be the other thing 